Hello, and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett, and on this channel, we cover all things Gen Chem related. In this video, we'll be kicking off chapter 11, and we're going to be learning about the kinetic theory associated with different phases and also the attractive forces associated with them. Let's get started. So if you've been following along in this series uh, and you just completed chapter 10, you should have learned all about these 3D, 3D uh, structures for molecules and how they affect things like the polarity of a molecule. Well, in this chapter, we're going to be building on from that information and exploring how the shape of these molecules impacts different properties affiliated with them. We'll also be diving a lot into understanding what are intermolecular forces and how they impact uh, certain properties associated with those molecules. So I just want to revisit real quick um, a diagram that you may have seen way back in chapter one, where we talked about the different phases of matter, your solid, your liquid, and gas. And so, you know, we know with all of these, they all have different shape or volume definitions associated with them. When it comes to solid material, solid material has a fixed shape and fixed volume, meaning that the shape is not going to change based on whatever container I put it in, or the volume is not going to change based on whatever container I put it in. Whereas liquids do have an indefinite shape, meaning they take the shape of the container, but a fixed volume. And your gases have indefinite for both, meaning they're gonna take on the shape and the volume of whatever container that they're placed in. Now, when we think about other properties such as the density, we know that our solids and liquids tend to be more dense than our gases. And both of our solids and liquids are not compressible, meaning we can't squeeze them down to squeeze out additional spaces that exist between those molecules. Whereas in gases, we do have that capability. Think about like a pop can when you hear that pssst sound, that's those molecules spreading out um, and, and getting stopping from being compressed. Um, we know liquids and gases tend to have a flow-like behavior, whereas solids don't. And the thing that really dictates many of these properties that we're seeing are these things called intermolecular forces or intermolecular attractions. So if we break that word down, intermolecular, inter means between molecular, molecule, so between molecule attractions. So as you can imagine, in a solid material, they tend to have very strong intermolecular attractions, very strong, so they're locked in place. Whereas liquids tend to have an intermediate or middle ground intermolecular forces, and your gases tend to have very weak intermolecular forces. And so keep this in mind, because as we get down um, through some example problems, we'll be revisiting these ideas later. So there are several reasons why these uh, different phases behave the way they do. And a lot of this is based on what we know as the kinetic molecular theory. So the state that the material is found in largely depends on two major factors, how much kinetic energy the actual particles contain and what intermolecular forces are present. Now, these two factors are going to be competing with one another. And if I'm able to gain enough energy to where I'm able to overcome those attractive forces, I'm able to change the state, um, the physical state that it's found in, or vice versa. If I lose some energy, then those attractive forces may take precedent and then they will dictate the overall phase. Now for each of our different phases, they all have varying degrees of freedom when it comes to how those molecules are moving. So our gases have complete uh, freedom of motion, meaning that those molecules are just constantly moving around. They have enough energy associated with them to overcome any attractive forces that are between those molecules. So you don't have them sticking to one another, hence why they are freely flowing. Whereas in solids, the materials are locked in place. And what that tells us is that they don't have enough energy to overcome those attractive forces that are present. So those molecules remain adhered to one another. And then liquid molecules, they have that intermediate phase where they're able to somewhat move, but when they move, they're taking their neighboring molecule with them. Now we discussed energy back in chapter six, well really we first introduced it in chapter one and then again in chapter six. And we wanna remember that energy is thought up of something that um, a particle or a molecule can possess. So we, we kind of paralleled it to money. So the more energy that a molecule has, the more freedom of motion that it has, the more freely it can move, kind of like with money. Um, and this energy can really be impacted by um, the temperature that these molecules are, are subjected to. The more energy that you have, as you can see in the, excuse me, the more, the higher the temperature that you have, as you can see in this equation, the greater your energy would end up being.
Now, the attractive forces that are associated with the molecules are those that are actually attracting individual molecules to one another. And the strength of these forces does vary significantly. We're going to get all into these forces in the next video. Um, but just remember that these, um, the stronger these attractive forces are, the less likely that these molecules will be able to be in motion. So kind of the take home message, if I have a solid material, likely it has high, strong intermolecular forces. If I have a liquid or even a gas, then those likely have weaker intermolecular forces. So again, in the case of gases, those molecules have gained enough energy to overcome the intermolecular forces that are present. And so as a result, you end up with this complete freedom of motion and these molecules really trying to get as far away from each other as possible. And so we see this in motion when we think about how the gases actually expand to fill whatever container that they are placed in. Um, and then the fact that you have these large degrees of spaces between the molecules is what le lends itself to these gases being compressible. When we compress something, we're squeezing out all of that external space or extra space and just getting those molecules as tightly packed as possible. And so this is just a picture representation of our gas molecules. And again, you can see these propane molecules are just moving around um, and, and bouncing around within that container. Now, again, our solids are quite the opposite. Their attractive forces are strong enough to lock those molecules in place. And so you end up getting this very distinct shape or structure that is, is generated. Um, there is limited freedom of motion of those molecules. And then your liquids, like I've stated, those are the intermediate. So they have um, strong, semi-strong intermolecular forces, but still not quite enough energy to completely separate the two. And so when we think about liquids, again, they tend to have uh, much higher densities, but they're not compressible because you have this, this um, connective, this attractive force that exists between the molecules that are present. You don't have that space that's created like in the gas situation. Now, the indefinite shape takes place because while you have some freedom of motion, these molecules are able to move. They're again holding on to their neighboring molecule, but ultimately that freedom of motion allows them to take on whatever shape of the container that they're, they're placed in. Okay. Now, in regards to phase changes, when we think about going from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or vice versa, gas to liquid, liquid to solid, what's happening in this case is we are either adding in energy to this to get those molecules in motion so they can escape, or we're removing energy so that we can slow down those molecules and allow them to adhere to one another. And so when we're dealing with a solid melting, that's because those molecules have gained enough energy from the external surroundings to overcome those attractive forces. Um, similarly, when we have our water start to boil, even more energy has gained. So these molecules can now really be in motion and get um, that degree, high degree of separation. Now in that condensing process, well, in this case, now we're lowering the temperature. We're removing energy from them. It's the exothermic process. Um, and so we have um, those molecules that eventually slow down enough to where they can become liquid and ultimately solid um, in the different phase changes. And so this is just a nice picture representation of how we would go from one entity, one uh, phase to and back to the other. So I hope this video helped you guys understand basic properties associated with different physical states of matter and the introdu introduction to uh, intermolecular forces. Make sure you guys check back on more videos. We're going to dive into all the intermolecular forces on the next one. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what else you would like to see, and I'll see you guys in future videos. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.